Peter Gammons, baseball historian, plays rock and roll guitar, and he wanted to throw a rock and roll show. You know, all of his peers have their like golf tournaments to raise money for charity, and that kind of shit didn't really interest him. Peter loves music. I always wanted to play in bands, and I did when I was in, in high school, and then I did in college, and gave it up, and the musicians taught me out of retirement. It was probably late 99 that he wanted to do a music charity event. And so he and Jeff Horrigan called me and they were like, do you want to do the show? And I was like, sure. They called me and said, hey, do you want to have lunch with Peter Gammons? And I'm like, well, who the hell wouldn't want to have lunch with Peter Gammons? <laughs> they wanted to do a rock and roll concert at the Paradise. Uh, obviously, you know, iconic venue. If you look at the Wall of Fame, you'll see all of the bands. Everybody to play here throughout the years. And that was the goal for every local band was to play the Paradise. If you got to play the Paradise, you made it. I do remember that the first song we ever did was Chuck Berry's Around and Around. They packed the room. We made 17,000. That's how it started. And they, they said, can you start planning next year's show? And we did right away. Three years later, Theo comes to Boston. Rumor has it he plays guitar. Hack, guitar player, permanently an advanced beginner in guitar. <laughs> Someone heard that Theo played in quotation marks and they probably said, we got to get him into this winter hot stove concert, and that's exactly what happened. The underhands to first, and the Boston Red Sox are the world champions. They won the World Series, and hot stove cool music went through the roof. Yeah, I mean, it ramped up really quickly. Everybody wanted to be part of that magic, you know? Fans were like throwing money at Theo, saying, what can we do to meet you and know you? And Paul said, let's turn all that money that people want to give you into grants to nonprofits that are helping kids. And that's exactly what they did. I think we kicked around, not a long list, but a few names. And he and I both got tired of brainstorming. And we said, ah, oh, screw it. We'll just name it later. And then someone said, hey, yeah, foundation to be named later. And it obviously stuck. Every year someone comes up to me, what's the deal with the name of the foundation? When are you going to get around to naming it? I just, you know, send them to the sports pages and <laughs> tell them to read up on baseball traits. Hot Stove Cool Music became the signature event of the foundation. And every penny raised went to the foundation, which made a huge impact and got the foundation going. After the 10th anniversary of Hot Stove Cool Music, we decided to honor Peter and name a scholarship after him. And we had it all set to pick one young person a year. We, that first year, had about 15 kids apply, and we interviewed all of them. When you sit down and interview these kids, it's a transformative experience. I mean, it's impossible to pick. We fell in love with all of them, so we couldn't just pick one, so we picked them all. And every year since, we've been picking 15 kids a year. It's up to 150 Gammon Scholars now. These kids are incredibly impressive. I'm going to the University of Missouri and I'm studying mechanical engineering with a minor in aerospace engineering and IT and another minor in mathematics. I feel yeah. underqualified. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was so fortunate to spend a decade in the Red Sox organization, and I consider myself very, very lucky to be a Cub today. When Theo took his job with the Cubs, I only made one phone call, and that was to Joe Shanahan. Michael Creamer is one of the first people that reached out to me to talk to me about doing Hot Stove and explain to me what Hot Stove was. And without even a blink, he just opened the doors of the Metro, gave us his staff, gave us his venue, and said, here, we're going to do this together. Let's host it. And it feels like it just was yesterday we did the first one, but we've done it seven times. It's just really incredible. It all kind of comes together on stage when you've got guys like Peter Gammons playing guitar and musicians from Chicago, musicians from Boston, you know, getting together. The Hot Stove community has only grown because of the two city connection. Most cities love baseball and music and giving back. It's a perfect mix for us. At the center of it all is Elise. Without her, none of this would be possible. The event is really a labor of love for so many people, and it shows. This is a family. So much of this has to do with the soul of Peter Gammons. Peter really is hot stove, cool music. It's just been this sort of magical ride with him. It doesn't matter his celebrity. He is just an incredibly wonderful person, and I've loved him for 20 years and we'll all be around for the next 20.